today on Combustion Chamber, we have our very first lowrider. Let's get after it. Welcome back to the extended hiatus of Combustion Chamber. I hope that each and every one of you is doing well during these times. I appreciate the love and support you've shown the episodes, even though we haven't been putting very much out. But there's somebody I wanna give a special shout out to, and he's my friend and fellow veteran, John Lopez. He's an outstanding photographer, an even better friend, and he is dedicated to shooting on film. And if you're a camera geek like we are, that's a big deal. Lopez. You're a hell of a guy. I'm glad to call you my friend. And let's face it, every time I take a picture of you, I make you look good, fool. Now let's go check out this Impala. David, thank you very much for being on the show today. We appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Really ecstatic to have you here today. I love lowriders. First lowrider on the show. What led you to get this lowrider? Uh, well, uh, growing up, I was always into mini trucks. I always liked lowered vehicles. And when I saw the movie Boys in the Hood in high school, Ice Cube driving the 63 Impala convertible, I said, I, I have to have me one of them cars. So I've always had a love for old Impalas ever since I've seen that movie. Finally was able to buy this car. It's a dream come true. What kind of reactions do you get? Being in Central Florida, there's not a lot of lowriders. So what kind of attention does that give you? The unique attention I get with this car is, number one, it's a nice car. You don't see a lot of classic cars like this around town. When I play with the hydraulics or hit the switches at a light, the people really freak out because it's not something you see in the Central Florida area very often. That's one thing that makes this car unique. You were headed to the Longwood Car Show yesterday and there was a vehicle full of kids. Can you tell us about that interaction? Yeah, so my wife and I pulled up to a light on the way to the show, and it was a lady with a few kids in the vehicle, and they were giving me the thumbs up and stuff like that. We were just sitting at the light, and so I decided to, to play with the switches on the car, the hydraulics, and the, the kids really, they really got a kick out of that. That's one thing cool about the car. It makes people happy. Some low riders are all show, some are made for hopping, but this is a great combination of show and go. How original is this car? It's all original, except for the hydraulics. It has a Toyota Tacoma rear end in it. And the reason for that is the original Impala axles were fairly weak. So with the stronger rear end, it's better for the hydraulics. It's got the original 283 matching numbers motor, the original two-speed power glide transmission. I believe the glass is all original. So the car originally came with factory AC. When you had air conditioner, it was a big deal. The seat belts, that's pretty unique. Back then, they didn't come with seat belts. So when I bought the car, my wife said, if you're gonna be taking people riding around in it, you better put seat belts in it. Original owners had it for 40 years. It was in Arizona up until three years ago. So it's a rust-free car. This is gonna be my first time driving a lowrider. It's been something I've wanted to do for years. I'm gonna need your help though, to show me how to hit switches in this car. Can we do that? Yeah, let's do it. I think you'll enjoy it. All right. All right, my man. First time in a lowrider never hit switches before how do i do this all right well we've already got the quick disconnect switch uh hooked up down there um so all you got to do is to raise the rear end just uh hit that uh that switch there just okay. tap it a couple times there you go and then the front end just tap that a couple times <laughs> that's so, awesome man yeah it doesn't take much no. Just, now, if you want to lower the rear end just a little bit, just tap that down a couple times. There you go, and then tap the front down just a little bit. There you go. We're about ride height right there. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, why don't you say we get this thing on the road? All right, let's do it. Being a low rider in this area is incredibly rare. What kind of reactions do you get when you take this thing out? Um, I get quite a few. I get honks, I get thumbs up, and then when I start playing with the hydraulics or hitting the switches, as they say, people really, they really freak out because it's not something you normally see in the Central Florida area. There are a dime a dozen over in LA, but in this area, it's really rare to see. Some low riders are a combination of show and go. Some are all show. What's the unique part about this car? I think the unique part about this car is it's pretty much all original besides the hydraulics. The rear axle is a Toyota Tacoma rear end because it's a little narrower. That way I can run fender skirts on the back without the wheels scraping. You've got some killer wheels on here and you got the real deal. You got Dayton's. Yeah. Uh, tell me about those. The Dayton wire wheels, they're all stainless steel. They're really 
very well made. You don't need a tube inside the rim. They don't leak air. They're the traditional low rider rim to have. There's other rims out there that are nice, but the, the Dayton's are the top of the line, I guess you could say. Driving this date, it's a lot of fun, but I notice it's, there's a little left and right, but you've improved that by switching out the tires. What was on before and what's on there now? So when I bought the car, it had the uh, premium Sportway 520 nylon tires on it, which are a traditional uh, low rider tire as well. The tires are so skinny and with the positive camber on the suspension, there wasn't a lot of tire on the road. You really had to be on top of the steering wheel to drive it straight, especially on the highway. It was a handful on the highway. So I rode on them for about a month and a half and I just didn't like the way I rode. So I went ahead and switched them out for radial tires and it's a night and day difference in the way it rides now. The 520s look really cool. Uh, these are pretty close to those look wise, but they ride so much better. Yeah, this is a completely different driving feel than anything I've driven before. It's different than just driving a classic car, but you still have to be with it just as much. Yeah. This is not a, uh, a kind of car that uh, you can just throw it and drive and you've got traction control, you've got modern suspension, plus with the lowrider setup on here, it's just a totally different feel. I love it, but it takes a little getting used to. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because it's got the, you know, the old cars had the slop in the steering wheel, so it's still got that plus the skinnier tires, so it's <laughs> adds to it. I've been a big lowrider fan my whole life, and the history behind it is really fascinating. So where's the office back at Division? You're in the office, baby. Going up. Lowriders are some of the most unique and beautiful custom cars to come out of America, specifically Southern California. The exact start of the lowrider is up for debate. Some say it started with the Paseo, a defiant stand of nonconformity and rebellion from the Mexican-American community. This was in response to Anglo nationalism in the 1930s and 40s. Some claim the unique style came from the Pachuco, when young men would get dressed up and hit the town. This unique look then made its way into the cars they drove. Others believe it started in the late 1940s due to post-war prosperity. No matter where it started, it spawned a unique way to show family and cultural heritage through what you drove. While speed was king in the 1950s and 60s, lowriders went for low and slow, with outlandish paint and designs. But it wasn't long before law enforcement took notice. Johnny Law enacted Section 24008 of the California Vehicle Code on January 1st, 1958, which made it illegal for any part of a car to sit or ride lower than the bottom of the rims. Protest followed, but so did innovation. Enter Ron Aguirre, who found a way to bypass the law with the use of hydraulic PESCO pumps to raise and lower the car with the flick of a switch. Today, people have taken hydros to extremes with rides like hoppers. Lowriders are now famous around the world and throughout entertainment. But the one thing that remains, and my favorite part, is it's all about the shared family passion. Okay, let's run. You showed me how to hit the switches earlier. I'm dying to do it. Can we do it right here? Yeah, we sure can. And then I'll just tap it up. I'm afraid if I own this car, I might break it. I'd be doing that yeah, all the time. Right. The hydraulic setup on this is a lay in place setup. It's not really made to hop. So I'm really careful on the hydraulics. Come on. Come on. All right, well, thank you. I mean, it's, I mean, you have the right of way, but 
<laughs> I guess I guess you're royalty, man. Lowrider so. royalty. They see you and they're like, man, I won't cross him, man. He's, that's a gangster car, man. He might shoot me. Hey, where's the Mac 10 in this thing? Driving this lowrider was an absolute dream come true. I've wanted to drive one for years and years, ever since I was a younger man, and today did not disappoint. I wanna thank our guest, David, for bringing this car out, letting me drive it, showing it to all of you. It, it means so much. Also, to explore the history of the lowrider, to educate people on that, I think is really important. It's a fantastic history, and I'm happy to have shared it with you all today. Also, our guest was nice enough to give me a cigar and further support my very bad habit. But thank you, David, I appreciate it. What did you think about this episode? Do you have a lowrider or do you aim to get one? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, that bell icon for instant notifications when we go live on YouTube. If you're watching this on Facebook, however, don't forget to like the page and we'll see y'all next time. Shit.